it was it was a rough it was a rough week. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Like, I, <laughs> I got, it's cra- I'll tell you what's crazy though. I will tell you what's neat is the one thing, and I wish, man, we had more people um, on here to talk about it because the one thing that that we have been wanting to talk about was actually um, this chapter. This chapter. Um, so might might just kind of go down a rabbit hole and see what happens. But uh, well, man, you want to you want to start us off in prayer? Sure. Uh, Heavenly Father, God, we just we just thank you, um, God, for this time. We thank you for for everyone that's been uh, that is able to sign on tonight, and um, just uh, God, we just pray that this time of of um, conversation and and um, <clears throat> um, God, just just the exchange, God, we just pray that that is uplifting to you. We just pray that um, God, we can just continue to grow in our marriages and. Uh, Lord, we just give this this entire uh, hour to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, what'd you say? Well, go see it, because I've already done whooped one of them. All right. Yeah, I whoop people. I whoop them. <laughs> so, anything, uh, I tell you what, it's go- listen, if y'all don't talk tonight, it's going to be a whole lot of me talking. So, <laughs> y'all going to have to... Y'all gonna have to talk. So I'm gonna open the floor. Anything specifically stand out to you? Um, you know, from from this this week's week reading. Is that good, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Something to say. Oh, no. there are a whole bunch of there are a whole bunch of things that um, stuck to me, like in chapter ten and eleven. Chapter eleven, I was just blown away because when you get done with that chapter, the last one, um, what's it called? Ready, willing, and waiting. Then you come to reality that what he said is true. That you don't really know what that level of love is. Because when George and I were talking about it, I'm like, this is not good because we're failing in this chapter too. And um, I like the indicators of the love drought because a couple of those we could, there was one couple that we really could, um, the, the conflict couple, Selena and Jose, yeah. where, um, we, we do that a lot where he doesn't understand what I'm trying to say. And then, um, I try to communicate with him and whatever I say, he just doesn't get it. And then I get frustrated. I talked about that last week. So George and I, um, we really um, understand the conflict couple because that seems like that was us, and we're really trying hard to um, to work on that. Good. I'll say. So. I'll say so. Oh, something else. Go ahead, Kelly. Um, from chapter 10 or 11, talking about the different indicators of the love drought, the one that Eric and I had said that we probably need the most work on is the misunderstanding on 171. Oh. Sorry. Um, I think we like underlined the entire last paragraph on 171 and, um, talking about like self-love that makes you more committed to understanding to what you understand than understanding your spouse. And um, we just both talked about how that's a good kind of parameter to think about, like when we are arguing or in a conflict, like thinking about, am I trying to understand you? Or am I just trying to get my point across and not listening? Um, I don't know, I just thought that last paragraph had a lot of things that you could really put into practice, like while you're, going through trying to understand each other. Right. I said, I agree with Kelly that that page in and of itself, just the whole depth of self love again, and the sin of how it just keeps coming out. Cause I am known to be an impatient person white and that was convicting i actually put ouch right next to it because 
I never thought about impatience as like, oh, it's what I want. I want it now. And, you know, even if it has anything to do with marital or just in general, impatience is all about self. And I didn't even realize that. I was just kind of like, again, just blown away again by the whole level of sin and self that it kind of comes through in, in so many different aspects that I didn't even realize. But what I will say is from like last week, what I really like is um, that our hope isn't in and of ourselves. Like, cause I can tend to be a very self-reliant person of like, Oh, I'll figure it out. I'll make the changes, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but my hope isn't in me and my ability to change or even in Leland and his ability to change, but the hope is in God and Jesus to ultimately change us. Mm -hmm. um, and I heard, I don't know where I've heard it, but it talks about being instead of sin conscious, being sun conscious and just being conscious of Jesus. And I believe as we do that, then he's going to begin to change us and begin to work that sin and that self out of us to allow, you know, me or us to be more patient or more understanding. You know what I mean? So it's just... I just really like it, but you know, I, I think it's just being, instead of being so sin conscious or self-focused, you know, being focused on him and allowing him to really change us. That's all. I love that, man, that's good. Anybody else have anything they underlined that kind of stuck out to them? I really liked this chapter. I got, I mean, I, I, uh, I really like it because I feel like all of these, um, I guess the, uh, the indicators of a love drought, I feel like I've been to all of, like, I've been, we've been through all of them, like disunity and misunderstanding and you know separation physical dysfunction um and you know we can talk about physical dysfunction for a second because um you know i feel like this is one that that let's be honest a lot of people it's just there's dysfunction this, yeah <laughs> there's just this and so we have people that reach out to us. And one of the things that I usually ask them is I'll, you know, close friends of mine that'll reach out and I'll say, you know, well, when is the last time that you guys actually been intimate with each other? Like on a real good, nothing, you know, like on a real intimate level. And um, it's either they haven't in months and months or it's, or she feels like she's being forced to do something that she doesn't really want to do. Um, I've heard it all. I've heard all different sides, all different, um, all different, you know? And so, and I'm not, I'm not saying that like those feelings are not adequate because I feel like they are. Um, but you know, this is something I'll never forget. I will never forget this. Um, we were sitting with some really good friends of ours. I, I think we had just been married, like just got married and we were sitting with some really good friends of ours and this girl who I'm really good friends with, her husband said, you know, I think that we, um, what did she say? Do you remember her? I don't even know. What I don't know. Okay. She said something like, I can count on, on one hand, how many times that, you know, we've had sex in the last month or two. Um, and to me as an, as a newly married couple, um, it just, I was so shocked and I was like, I didn't understand that, but I could tell that it really bothered him. And, um, you know, for me, I was like, it was, it was, I almost felt embarrassed for her. Um, I just felt like that was just like, I don't know. I just, and so to me, I was like, I don't ever want my husband to even say like say that to joke about that to, I don't even ever want that to be true. Um, that's what I said to myself. And from then on, I made it, I made it, you know, something that I knew that as a man he needed and I was going to do whatever I could to make sure that I was there for him in that, in because of that. And so, um, and a lot of people may not agree with me, but 
um, but I have a very different take on on that. So no, it's good. <laughs> you know, because here's no, I'm gonna help you. Okay. Here's 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 what we what we were talking about. You know, the other day, um, and and it's something I really wanted to kind of hit on. Um, so it may get a little uncomfortable. I don't really care. Uh, I just want I just want to get it out there because here's the things that I believe that a lot of couples deal with, and you know it's it's faith, it's friends, it's finances, um, it's it's sex. I was hoping to go for the whole <laughs> alliterated didn't it didn't work. But anyway, I think one of the biggest things that people struggle with the most is is the let's let's just get real is is sex. Uh, most of the time, it's because uh, men, we have not been emotional. Um, we haven't filled the emotional love tank that our wives need in order to, to feel like, Hey, I want to reciprocate the physical action, uh, for you. Um, and, or, or it goes to the way swings to the other way. And, and women say, well, you, because you haven't done it, I'm not going to give you any. So I'm going to make you work for it. And I'm like, man, that is just so awful across the board. Because, man, in the previous chapters that we were talking about that I wanted to deal with, I wish I would have known, I, I wish I remember which chapter it was. It was just talking about how, man, sex is a, is a physical act in such a way that, man, you give yourself wholeheartedly to one another. Like it is a, honestly, it's an act of worship. It's really an act of worship. And one of the things that, and, and here's the deal. I came from a divorced home. I came from, I came from those, those types of things. And I just... I always look back and, and, and just went, what are some of the indicators that led to some of those dysfunctions? And I think one of the big things is, is how we reciprocate love and the facts of how guys need to feel affection and need sex. And women need that real emotional, um, emotional connection. Now, I've seen where women are like, look, man, you can, you can take care of business. I mean, there, there is that side as well, too. I'm not saying that women aren't physical. That's not what I'm saying at all. Uh, however, I do believe that in, in, in this conflict, that's, that's what I wanted to talk about, was the conflict of Selena and, and Jose. It's right here. Um, just talking about how she knew what – he was a very romantic guy, and she knew how to withhold it from him to get what she wanted, and vice, and vice versa. And I'm going, man, that is so – that is a, a, a that is a recipe for disaster when it comes into our relationships, because man, sex is one of those things that that honestly, ladies, I'm just letting you know if you didn't know this, I'm just gonna let you know now. That is something that men that men need. We are physical. We are we we are turned on by what we see. We're very visual um, people. So that's one of the reasons why I think men have got to do a better job of making sure they're protecting what they see as well as well as learning some self-control. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to deny that. I think, man, we can, we, we, we need to learn some self-control, but here's the one thing that I wanted in my marriage. I wanted to make sure that I was going to my own watering hole. Like I wasn't searching for somebody else. I want to know that, you know, that I can come to my wife and know that, Hey, she's going to take care of me in this way. And I want her to feel the same way that she's gonna, she doesn't need to go in and talk to her girlfriends about, about something or going to another man to try to get an emotional connection uh, feeling, you know, from, from him. If I'm not getting, I was like, no, man, we got to figure out how to make this thing work. We got to figure out how to make sure that I'm giving you what you need and I'm, that you're giving me what I need um, so that we don't have to even worry about that. So that's kind of been, been our stance. Jess told me, you know, when we were first, when, when we were first married, and I wish I could actually say this, uh, that I, I reciprocated it. But she was like, you'll never have to, you'll, you'll never have to go looking anywhere else. I'm all, I am going to take care of you um, in, that, in that way. And I'm going to tell you what, I, I can, nine times out of ten, baby's on it. You know, so it's, it's, I'm just being real. Uh, it's just amazing. It's cool. Anyway, uh, I, wish, I wish that I could have said that from an emotional standpoint uh, for her, that I was always there for her. But it wasn't until I started doing some soul searching for me and peeling off the layers of why is it that I am not giving her what she needs um, from that, from that uh, emotional standpoint. And it's because, man, I had a whole lot of baggage in my life that I needed to work through based on some, some things that happened to me as a child. So anyway, going through that whole, that whole deal, I think, man, that, that sex really is one of those, those big deals that we don't like to talk about um, and then we don't want to talk about because it's uncomfortable. Um, but 
Kylie, I know you were probably the youngest married couple on here right now that I'm I'm thinking about. Um, I I I'm just telling you, man, it's it is a it's it's a big it's a big deal. Um, and that and that's it. Where's Brandon? This is awkward. Um, <laughs> You know, in, in that uh, in that deal. I should help not be make it not awkward. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm with you 100. percent It's so true, but it's like everything you're saying is goes down to the selfishness and the selflessness. Uh, you know, even if it's not sex or it's it's an argument, and one right. of you, some, someone's got to break. Someone's got to step up and say, you know what? I really don't want to give in right now, but I'm going to give in because I love you and and vice versa and sex is just uh one of those things it's just it's more magnified because it's you know it's 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 awesome you know and so that's magnified through those those things and kudos to you guys for you know recognizing your your needs and and knowing what you you both want and that's what kelly and i you know sometimes when we have that step you know we're so busy we're so stagnant and we just don't even know why we're mad at each other you know it's like, why are you grumpy? I don't know. Why are you grumpy? You know? And then I'm like, Matt, man, I need my medicine. If you, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and next thing you know, I'm all ears. What, what do you want to talk about? You want to talk about poems, movies, you know, I'm down, you know, yeah. but at the same time, you know, at the same time, just like Matt, you know, I, I gotta know that, you know what? We haven't seen each other in a while you know, I need to, we, we need to really just sit down and talk and just reconnect and, 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 and go that approach and, and know that, uh, you know, there's a, there's a really good chance that, uh, you know, I'm going to get some medicine as well. That's not the reason why, you know, but, but it's me just like Matt understanding that, uh, you know, we both need to fill each other's cups and be so, as selfless as possible and, and monitor the situation where, you know what, we haven't seen each other in a while. I can't expect her just be like, let's go, baby. Let's bam. You know what I'm saying? But also there's times where I'm, I'm working so much and, and we have some, you know, I'm under a lot of pressure. We have a lot of stressed out, you know, and she recognizes that. So she kind of puts her emotion, emotional needs on hold and we just go, you know, get together and, and, and go have a nice little session, you know? And, uh, and then, you know, and so that's something, but, but most of the time we're grumpy and grouchy at each other. It's because we, we really love each other and we want to spend time with each other. And, 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 you know, one of us has got a break. So it's kind of recognizing, you know, the person's needs at that point, which is most, uh, and then, and then being able to, uh, to, to fulfill it, you know, but, you know, it's like the whole chapter where he's talking about you know, the, the root of people's sex problems is the fact that, you know, they're not, you know, really uh, in love and, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I could definitely imagine, imagine that, you know, but, you know, at the same time, I feel, man, if they could just like, you know, get it, get it, get it together, you know, that's gonna, that's gonna help, you know. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. We're we're going through the same thing. So we're th through reading this chapter. We're both recognizing. You know what, man? You know, let's let's moving forward. Let's let's do that. Where, you know, we're whatever we're feeling. She's like, listen, I I'm, she's pregnant right now. She probably needs me more emotionally than whatever. We and she, she you know, I gotta just you know just sit down and and, and connect with her and love her up and and do because that's what she needs you know and sometimes so you know i gotta you know if i start focusing on what my needs are i gotta kind of blow the whistle a little bit and chill so that's all i gotta say good dude anybody else on this subject man i have a question for you can you explain more elaborate in regards to like seeing what you had to explore like yourself within yourself so that you could be there more emotionally for Jess? Yeah, absolutely. That's good. That's good. Um, so, so here's the deal. Um, oh goodness. Where, where do we even start? Um, all my life I had been, I had been hurt physically and emotionally by women. And I'm not talking about like breakup girlfriends and stuff. I'm talking about women. Uh, <clears throat> so for me, when I came into my marriage, 
I came in with an iron fist. Look, you're going you're gonna to get in that kitchen and make me a ham sandwich. Like, that's what you're going to do. You're going to like it, and we just – we just gonna go, and that's and that's how I, that's that was my approach because I watched. God bless my mom. I love my mom, but my mom had a lot of demons um, <clears throat> that she had to kind of kind of work through. Uh, but I watched how my mom, my mom was a very dominant, type A, like cut you with her words kind of woman. She just was. She didn't take no junk, and so I just watched the way she talked to my dad, the man I call my dad. And I was just like, something that just doesn't add up to this. There's just this, for me, there was just this unhealthy uh, connection where it was like, man, how in the world, just knowing this is, this is the, my dad is supposed to be the leader of the home, it right? It's like he, the roles were the switched. The roles were switched. Like she was the man in the relationship. Was, and yeah. He was kind of like, whatever you say, I'll do. And it was just. Until, until things just kind of exploded. So I'm just. I'm just saying, I mean, it, it worked for them. I mean, they've been together, together 30 years, but to me, there just, something was just not right. So when I came into the marriage, I swung the pendulum way to the other side. So instead of actually, you know, meeting her needs, I was, I was, I was breaking her down. So let me help you understand. I come from a, that kind of dynamic just comes from a very touchy, feely. Everything is absolutely perfect family. No problems. Everything was a bowl full of peaches and cherries and unicorns farting rainbows. Like it was, it was perfect to the point where it just make you sick. Like I was like, this can't even be real. This, this is, this is not even real. Even when we come home, Again, I think we talked about this. Jess was so close with her dad. She's 20 some years old sitting in his lap. I'm like, this is stupid. So I'm like, this doesn't make sense to me. So I'm trying to, so I'm saying, you're seeing the dynamics. They're just like, whoo. And I'm going, I don't understand this. So her dad, you know, it, it, good man. Her dad's a good man. Uh, but he was, oh, baby, like, I just paint a picture of everything that's just perfect. And that's what it, what it looked like to me. And I was just like, I can't do this. Like, I don't even know how to begin to do this because girls are just too emotional for me. That's why I pray to God. I mean, I'm just thankful that I got boys. Like it just, it just is what it is. So mm. I'm telling you this, that was a whole lot of details to answer you this question. Three years into our marriage, it won't work. It, it wasn't working. And I'm going, something's got to change. And it wasn't until, man, me and the Holy Spirit really got to wrestling. It was a Jacob moment for me. It was a Jacob moment uh, where I'm wrestling with the Holy Spirit. I'm like, I'm not letting go. You can go ahead and dislocate my hip all you want, but you're going to bless me. Like something's got to happen here. And he took me to the book of Colossians chapter three. And that, that chapter changed my life. And it was the fact that I told you to put away anger and outbursts of wrath and all these things. And he just lists all these things. I'm like, well, how do I do that? And he's like, if you shut up long enough to read the next couple of verses, I'll tell you how to do that. And so he was talking, about, I need you to put on love. I need you to put on kindness. I need you to put on compassion. I need to put all these things. And so I had to peel back the layers of why it was um, that I could not emotionally attach to her. And it was a lot of it was going back to what Eric said. It was the love of self more than the love of Jess. And so when I started, when I started really dissecting, why am I angry? Why am I having these outbursts of wrath? Why am I taking it out on her? I had, it, it took me back to, man, some things that happened in my childhood. And I had to really, really work through that. Um, in the, in the fact of calling my biological father and telling him, man, Hey, listen, I don't need you in my life, but I forgive you for all the things that you allowed to happen. These are the things that you allowed these women, um, that you chose to marry due to me, uh, which you could have prevented from happening. And that's why I didn't like, I did I, I, I liked her and I thought I loved her, but man, I tell you what, I'm, I'm in, I'm in year 12 of our marriage and I'm still beginning to, to see what love really looks like. This book is like kind of changing our, our whole dynamic of what that looks like. You mean you haven't loved me the whole time? Well, it's more like lust, you know, but Oh, knock it off. Yes. We ain't trying to argue right now. <laughs> no, but I'm saying, but for real, it's like, you don't, you don't really begin to even understand or fathom what it means to love because of how selfish you really are. And Does that make can sense? I, well, Did that me, answer your question, by the way? 
Well, during that this time, um, I was I was always brought up that marriage. You know, you hear that marriage should be a hundred and hundred, like you give a hundred percent, your husband gives a hundred percent and it makes it work. You've always heard 50, 50, like I've heard all of them. I've heard sometimes a, a spouse does 75, 25, like I've heard all of them. And so, but I was always brought up that your relationship with your spouse is 100 zero. You give 100% expecting nothing in return. Because if I'm here to say that I'm supposed to give 100 and he's supposed to give 100, that means that I have control over his 100 and I don't. I have zero control over his 100. So what do I have control over? Of my 100. That's all I have control over. And if Jesus is going to love us selflessly, I knew that I had to love him selflessly, not expecting him to be the perfect husband. And so during that time, we still made love. We still, um, I still would, uh, you know, love him as if he had not hurt me. Um, and which so, was, which was tough. It wasn't easy because I didn't come from a family that yelled. He came from a family that yelled. And so I was, I didn't understand why every we, fight had to be a screaming match. He's just talking loud. That's all. Yeah. Well, I learned not, I learned lot, talking loud from you because his whole family talks loud, but I didn't understand like why it is that everybody, like you had to scream all the time. But I promise you, I can tell you that year one through three, the only way that I was able to get through it was because I kept thinking, this is not about me. This is not about me. This is not about me. If it's about him, what would, if, if Jesus was to come and stand before me right now, would I look selfish in the way that I responded to Matt or would I look selfless in the way that I, in the way that I was his wife? I said, if Matt could have the perfect wife, what would she look like? A godly biblical wife. What would she look like? And I knew that I had to be that for him with no strings attached, whether he loved me the way that I felt like he should or not. And I can tell you that that is why we're here 12 years later is because I never stopped thinking about that and doing that. Now I was never perfect and I'll, you know, and I, of course I screamed back sometimes, but I never forgot 100 zero. I just, and that's what helped me. Mm. And he had those demons to deal with. I mean, he was abused as a child by his stepmom and he had hate towards his real father. And like during year two, he had to actually go and, and hit that head on. He'd never, uh, forgiven him for the things that he had done, nor did his father ask for forgiveness. So you're going to somebody who didn't ask for forgiveness, but you're telling them that you forgive them. Like sometimes you have to go back in order to go forward. So what is it that's caused you to either clam up or, or not be able to be intimate with your spouse? You know, like I know a lot of women that were sexually abused or whatever as a young child. And so that has caused problems in the marriage you know, going forward. And so I can't relate to that. But what I can say is sometimes you have to go back and whether that person asks for forgiveness or not, you have to forgive them. Because I think that was a breakthrough in our marriage is him forgiving his father and him looking at me differently, not through the eyes of the lens of somebody that's going to hurt him, but the, through the eyes of that somebody's going to love him. Like, I want to love you. And so it was just a different perspective. So anyway. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that. No, I mean, it's, it's good. I mean, and again, I don't want to make this about us. I, re I really don't. Um, but one of the things, I think one of the, the underlying principles of, of what I had to deal with was, is she really going to leave me? And it's like, how much can I inflict on her uh, before she actually leaves? And I can say, I told you so, you just, you're just going to leave. Does that make sense? And I think we have this preconceived notion that, man, they, your spouse is just every other problem that's ever come into your life. I'm just, I'm just keeping it real. Um, it's funny because we have these hurt triggers, things that we say in order to, because of the hurt that has been put upon us when we were younger. And he used to always say in all of our fights, he used to say, why do you, do you regret, regret marrying me? Are you going to leave me now? Are you going to walk out? I mean, he, it was like a constant thing that I had to keep reassuring him no, I'm not going to leave you, but why are you, why do you like, why can you not stand me? Like, why are you screaming at me? And why, 
why can't you just let me love you? It was like, mm -hmm. I had to every day knock down this wall that he kept building back up. Um, and so he was, ex he was wanting me to walk out, but he didn't want me to walk out. He just wanted me, he wanted that reassurance that I wasn't going to go anywhere. And so as you can see, it was a constant battle of me having to fight from something that somebody else did years ago. So maybe you guys can relate to that. And, yeah. um, we're going we're gonna to stop Anybody talking. else want to say anything about past experiences or anything like that? Well, um, George is sitting here right next to me, but he's not feeling too good right now. But he agrees with every single thing you said um, because he has um, he's been hurt by other women also. And he was the same way when we used to get into fights. He'd say the same thing. Are you going to leave? Are you going to leave? And it was like I was like you, Jessica. I was like fighting. I was like I didn't understand where he was coming from. But right now, I mean, he's been going to um, – therapy because he has um bipolar and depression so on top of everything else you know that can swing him into his highs or to his lows so he's going to therapy and he's trying to work through all that you're trying to figure out you know when i'm sitting there trying to say okay you need to go to bed now and put your apnea machine on and he takes it as me being controlling because he had he's had other women in his life being controlling and he doesn't see it as me trying to look out for him and do what's best for him as far as his health goes yeah yeah i i he said that to me before stop being like my mom because his mom was very controlling and if i tell him just it has something to do with tone as well tone. if i say it differently he won't say that but if i say it demanding like this is what you need to do it's almost like i'm talking down to him and he asks me to check my tone I'm like okay <laughs> i'll check it uh, Matt, what's up? Yeah, I had, you know, my, my dad's uh bipolar, you know, growing up with, I mean, just kind of the same, you know, kind of like the perfect mix uh, between Jess's, you know, parents and what you went through because my parents are, you know, they're, 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 they're in love with God. They're Christian people, but my dad would flip and turn into the most, one of the scariest monsters. Right. I mean, he would, you know, put his fist through walls. Uh, he took the every tool in the garage, including like table saws, and threw them out on the lawn. And uh, I mean, I can just tell you more really, really scary things. But you know, it's like every day it was like you're walking on eggshells. You know, and of course that's you know shaped who I am today. Uh, and you know, I'm you know, it's, it's kind of like, it's hard for me to relax. You know, it's like I'm carrying around anxiety a lot. And, uh, you know, um, I'm almost, you know, in, in, in confrontational, you know, sometimes like, you know, I want to say something and, and talk to Kelly and I just hold it in and hold it in and hold it in and hold it. And don't say anything just to keep peace, keep a peaceful, you know, household things that, you know, whatever. And, and she'll, and we'll get into, uh, you know, um, a disagreement or something like that. And I get, you know, she says a couple of things and it's super, I get super defensive, you know, very, very defensive. And it's one of the main things, one of the things we've been working on is her being able to, to say stuff to me without taking it to the nth degree where I get totally, uh, offended or disrespected or, you know, whatever. It's just, it's constant. I mean, it's, I've been programmed to react a certain way. And uh, I had to do the same thing, uh, Matt. You know, I I played football for many years, and I think that was like a, an outlet for me because I love the violent part. And then I, when I went to tennis, I started – I would break every racket. I mean, you want to talk about the opposite of a Christian on the court. I mean, F-bombs all over the place, throwing rackets – in the woods. I mean, I don't know how many times I broke my racket. It's just this trigger would just flip and I just go nuts on the court. And it that happened day in and day out until it just, you know, you just you just look back and you're like so disgusted in the way you acted. And then you're just really like just thinking, you know, I, I got to I, I just you it comes to 
reality of you, you start, I mean, for me, it was like, you know what? It's just, it's just this anger that I grew up with. This is the way he handles things. And that's the way I'm handling things. And that's just the way I've seen handling things. Plus I'm really pissed off for other reasons. And I had to say, you know what? I had to let it go. I had to let it go. Uh, I mean, it was really, uh, a neat thing. I stumbled on this little church in Tallahassee and this pastor, Johnny Arlen really helped me identify it and, 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 and help me, you know, with some certain verses that were just, you know, certain. And, you know, that's what it is though. It's, it's really, it's really, uh, getting the accuracy of yourself, which is what Matt did and looking, instead of looking at her, at, he got to a point where you know what you gotta you gotta look at yourself and that's getting vertical and before you get in horizontal so you know we still are you know have ripple effects of that here and you know I gotta you know chew through my cheek and and take some criticism and uh learn not to be so defensive or what have you but uh you know that's that's you know that's tough you know it's tough to go through that uh, you know, when you grow up and you have a lot of stuff that happens, it's just not fair, but it's also not fair to Kelly. And, uh, you got to get it. You got to just be man up. You got to man up. You got to get it right for with yourself so that, you know, everything else gets better. Good. Um, I think what a lot of people are saying correlates with it's on a uh, page 156 face up to your wrongs. And I highlighted that section. Because I think like uh, Eric, you were saying, we tend to get defensive and I'm very much like this. Um, when Brandon talks to me and he's very good at using soft tones, but in my head, I'm already playing out. How am I going to come back at him? Like I'm playing the defense instead of actually listening to what he's trying to say to me, which goes into the misunderstanding. And then my tone tends to be a little more harsher. And so then he's like, why are you getting upset? And I'm like, I'm not. But my tone is saying that I'm upset. And so I think for me, that's something I need to personally work on is facing up to my wrongs. And um, this was something we talked about when we did marriage mentoring is sort of those things that make you tick. And mine is control. And when I feel like I'm losing control, I get super defensive. Mm. And Brandon knows that. And so he'll try to like say like, I'm not trying to like, say that I'm always right, but you know, you have to sometimes admit that you're wrong. And I do. So I think that was something big that we both agreed on is um, first, I have to look at myself and see, okay, why am I getting defensive? Maybe I should just listen. Maybe he's not coming at me. And um, I don't think that has anything to do with my upbringing. Like I was brought up in a very Christian home. My parents hardly ever fought. I think just being very competitive and the oldest child and just always wanting to be first at everything um just creates a lot of conflict and brandon's the oldest he's competitive too so that's something that we conflict ab about because we're both first born so we both like to be in control but um that's something that we have found out really quick even only being we've been married like two months now um but it's definitely a different dynamic than when we were <laughs> dating because now we're around each other 24 seven. So those little things start to come out. Yeah. Well, kudos, kudos to you to, to start this marriage book now, this so early in, in your marriage. Right. I see that, you know, react. And it's, it, you know, I, you know, we you can't, you can't say shit or what it could have, cause we're at least, Hey, we're all, we're all doing something about it right now. So we should all should be proud of ourselves right now you know because we're stepping up and doing something so whether you're doing it early or late you know it doesn't matter but uh just you know like what matt said just uh just keep communicating what was very important to you and very important to him and then be ready to uh to, you know to fold when, when you need to fold and him fold when you when he's got to fold yeah no i completely agree i wish brandon was down here he's sick so he went to bed but I think he would have really liked this conversation. Um, and I think he would have agreed a lot with you guys because his past is very different than mine. It's very similar to Matt's. He grew up in a very hostile home environment, um, broken family. He was moved around to different people, 
wound up with his grandparents, thank God, because I don't know what he would have done if he didn't stay with them. But um, his parents are pretty much not involved in his life at all. So he doesn't really have a connection with his mom. And I don't know if that, it obviously, it plays into our relationship, but I don't know. He would have to be down here for that. I don't want to talk on his part. <laughs> well, Brandon, I tell you what, man, just knowing his, his background, Man, Brandon's a good dude. I like Brandon. He is a sweet guy. He ended up really good. He yeah, he did. Despite his his, his mm. upbringing, we we just love him. Lila, what you think, man? What's what's going on in that in that brain of yours? <laughs> um, I don't know. I had a lot of different thoughts. Um, it just kind of took me back to to some of the um the things that that um Hope and I have been through in our marriage, and I know. You know, just, you know, when we went through counseling, we worked, we had to work on a lot of stuff um, in our past. We had to look at our, our family relationships and how they impacted um, our marriage. Um, we looked at, you know, how we contributed. Um, and we were actually talking about it this week because we, we were actually talking about sex this week, <laughs> believe it or not. And um, just the, um, my expectation uh, for sex um, and the, I guess the regularity <laughs> at, at, uh, at with which I would like it. Um, and we talked about, you know, the, the possibility of some sort of schedule or, um, you know, something like that. What, what would it look like? Cause you know, we, we get busy. I work, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm out of the house by like six 30 and I'm back in the house some nights by, you know, seven o'clock or, you know, it, it just depends. Um, but, you know, with three kids, um, one actually sleeping in our room, we put her in our walk-in closet, you know, she could pop in at any time when we, <laughs> when we try to, There's no you know. lock on her door either. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's hard, it's hard to, to, um, to try to figure out how we can make things, um, work, um, sexually. And I know one of my biggest downfalls um, is something that we were talking about tonight, just my, me emotionally depositing into my wife. Like I know, I know at it. Um, I don't know that I've actually made any progress since finding out that her love language is quality time. So, um, that's an area where I know that if I want, um, if I want um, the sexual fulfillment um, from her, then I've got to be able to, to, to um, you know, fill, fill her love tank um, with, with quality time. So I've, I've been, the best that I, that I can do right now is I'm, I'm aware of it. Before, before I was just completely unaware of it, but now I'm aware of it and now I have to do something. Mm -hmm. So um, now I'm trying to get past the guilt of, oh, that was an opportunity for me to spend quality time with my wife versus doing something that was, you know, more for self. So, um, you know, I, I think, you know, I know, you know, my role in the family is I'm, I'm the most selfish person in our relationship. I can own up to that. Um, um, I'm fully aware of it. <laughs> um, so I've got, I've got a lot of work to do. Um, but yeah, just, just the, the, it's, it's good discussion tonight. I, I like, I like a lot of the stuff that I'm hearing. Um, but yeah, that's just, that's just, you know, um, in the interest of, of full disclosure, that's kind of where I am with it. It just kind of jogged my memory to, to a conversation that we had this week. So. Can I add, I want to add to, because I, I, I like what you guys are sharing. I appreciate Matt and just like everything that you're sharing. You know, I think it's really good and you're not talking too much or anything. It's really good. Um, and I want to say about two things. Like I had said, we had what I'm called injuries to our sex life, love life, whatever you want to call it. Cause I don't like the word trauma anyway. So what we, in addition to what we were talking about yesterday was, um, Cause we had sex before marriage and just a whole bunch of stuff. Um, yeah, I was, uh, you know, there was pornography, you know, I, I had a pornography issue. Um, so, I mean, there, there was, there was a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There and was a lot there. 
I found that out when we were married three weeks, but anyway, so I, what I said to Leland is, cause you know, I think sex is incredibly important. I think it's about intimacy and safety and there's, there is so much to it. And I think it is so important. Um, but what I realized is sometimes I just want to go to him and like talk everything out. But what I need to do is I need to go and process it with somebody else, with God and kind of let him work on some of that. Cause I have some unforgiveness, you know, and some of my own safety and vulnerability issues because of our past. Um, so before we can have certain conversations, cause we have to have some conversations about it. I have to do some of my own work so that you know, we can get to the place of, you know, ultimately where we want our marriage to be, sex, intimacy, all of it, because there's so much safety and vulnerability in that. And when you've had significant trauma, however that looks, injuries, whatever you want to call it, you know, two aspects, you know, there, there's healing to do. And I think that's the cool part, what I really like, because I think in marriage, there's healing. Like what you're talking about, like God used Jess, you heal. You know, and I think God kind of brings all of that stuff up in our lives again and again because he wants us to heal and he wants us to deal with it. And that's the cool part about marriage and the commitment to it that if we can allow whatever has to be done, there can be incredible healing in our marriages from everything that we bring in, whether it's from each other or from other people. So it's just. I don't know. I think underneath a lot of that, the anger that comes out, cause I'll have explosions of anger kind of sort of, you know, my female version of anger, <laughs> I get frustrated, but it's more hurt or more fear that's coming out underneath of it. And if I can figure out that stuff, you know, but you know, I think, yeah, I'll, I'll stop talking. No, it's good. It's good. I'm glad you brought that. I mean, I'm glad you guys, where are that open and honest? Cause I think uh, there's more people that have dealt with that than we mm -hmm. think, you know, Absolutely. They it or they feel comfortable admitting it or not. I mean, just, it, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. And I mean, I'll, I'll just be honest and tell you, there was a couple that started this group with us. They only came one time and then she just messaged me and she just said, he is not in a, her husband is not in a place where he wants to change right now. Um, and so, and he's dealing with a lot of that stuff that we've been, that we've been talking about tonight. And I mean, it's, it, there's so much prayer that, that goes into healing. Um, you know, we never, we never did. We, we went to counseling one time and it was with a lady from the church. It was with a lady from the church that I had known my whole life. And she, we went to, we went to counseling with her and she had just recently been cheated on by her husband. And they had, she just found out with another lady, with another, not a yeah, another lady that was in the church. So she like hated all men, all men. So she sided with me the whole time and we walked out of there thinking he was more mad at me than he was when we walked in there it was like the worst hour of our mm. life <laughs> and he's it never was, let me live it down <laughs> i've never been to another counseling session i like mm -mm. so i can mm -mm. understand the trauma that anyone you know anything that happens i mean because that counseling session like it was done. Like after that, there was no, like, there wasn't ever saying, okay, can we find somebody else? You know, maybe even a man. It <laughs> was like, you nothing. have lost your man. Yeah. Your next counselor will be a man. Exactly. <laughs> he is like, it was like, nope. But, so, I, but let me tell you something though, in that, in that moment. And I, and I want to hear from, I want to hear it from Jeff and Rachel. Um, Cause y'all have not talked at all. And we got five minutes left. Who? Jeff and Rachel. Three more. Oh, Jeff and Rachel. I was yeah. like, is there a couple in here named no, Jeff and no, Rachel? No. <laughs> I was like, who's Jeff and Rachel? <laughs> okay. Uh, I think, I think one of the, but here's the deal. I went into that, I went into that counseling session already pissed because it was a female. <laughs> I was like, I am not going to listen to you 
at all. You are a female, <laughs> and I don't even like you. I should have known that. I'm just. I'm being honest. Like listen to me. Females. I'm just. I'm just. Tell, listen to me. I'm just. I'm just telling you like it is. I had a hard time with women. Period. I, I just. I didn't realize how much I. I. I love my. I, I do. I love my wife, but I didn't realize like deep down, like. I am going to hurt you before you have an opportunity to hurt me. And I didn't, I didn't realize that. I, I did not, um, <laughs> I did not, I did not realize it, that, that I had a lot of, I had a lot of anger towards women, period. So it didn't matter if, if, if she, if she had the greatest info in the world, <laughs> I was not about to listen to anything that was coming out of her mouth. And here's the deal. It was so it was funny. That, it was almost like she was like high fiving me the whole time, and because she just kept saying, "No, it was uncomfortable." It was. It was like, I was like, "I was uncomfortable." This, this and doesn't she, even make sense. What you saying? And right she now. was siding with me the whole time, and I was uncomfortable. It was, I was bad. Like, uh... like when you okay? So never mind. We're gonna leave it alone. <laughs> however, however, it was within those moments though that I really got. Man, I really got to see the heart of of where I was. I was like, man, I am I am angry. I am bitter. I have got I've got so much baggage. And and here's the deal. You know, I mean, we talk about we're talking about porn. We're talking about all this stuff. Now, let me tell you something, man. When God saved me from that, it was like a light switch. God took it from me, and it never, it whatever. It doesn't even doesn't even it doesn't even matter anymore. But it was those things that, man. It really stemmed back, man. This it don't I, I don't have I don't have enough time to talk about it. But anyway, this is a lot of things. No, guys. because I mean I want to respect the time at nine o'clock. I but, know, but and I want to hear from Jeff and then Rachel. Okay, yeah, we <laughs> so. have. If you guys have to jump off, jump off, and that's totally fine. But if you, I mean, I, we want still want to hear from you guys. So yeah, whoever wants so. to talk and go. I'll go ahead. Um. I'll be honest that I did not finish the reading. I'm flying solo because Phil's out of town and I cannot do single momming for sure. My mom is actually inside helping me and that helped. Mom and grandma, we can lock it down. I can't do it by myself though. Right. So I'll just kind of like, but Phil and I were raised pretty similar. We came from similar homes. I would just say that mine was more Christ centered. So it looked the same. I mean, similar, you know what I mean? But the Christ-centered part changes it. Um, and so our marriage, like how we compared our marriages isn't like crazy. How we fight and resolve things is a little different. Um, but one of the things that we gave each other permission to do, this actually came about through parenting and then we brought it into marriage. But we constantly were going back and forth. Well, I was raised this way and I was raised this way and I parented this way and I parented this way. Like how we raise our kids and how we did discipline was just very different. And so we finally like came to this point where we said, we've got to give ourselves permission to drop it completely. It does not matter anymore, good, bad, or anything, how we were parented because God is the only standard. And we've brought that over into our marriage too. It does not matter how our marriages were shown to us, how we were raised. It doesn't matter because God is the standard. What he expects for our relationship is a standard. So I think that that was like a huge point of us really, really realizing the whole like leaving right. aspect mm -hmm. um, of marriage. It wasn't just physically like, oh, I'm, not going to call mom for whatever, like, it, <laughs> but it was like, break the ties. I don't have to use it as a crutch. I don't have to constantly bring it up. Even if it's a good thing, it's not because my parents did it. It's because God did it. God did it through them. So constantly bringing back that vertical point has let us kind of avoid the like vicious cycle of like where our conversations were constantly going. Um, so that was something that we definitely brought in. That's good. That's good. I like that. We've yeah. had to do that. I like that. Drop, drop it. Who cares? It doesn't matter. Because I wasn't there to see your side and you weren't there to see my side. 
so he said, she said game anyway. So just, it doesn't matter. It's so divisive when ultimately we just want to do it God's way. Right. <laughs> like, exactly. Who cares anymore? Not God. <laughs> Clearly. Right. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Sorry, my internet connection is jumping in and out here. Um, but, uh, you know, a couple things um, I was thinking about when listening to everybody. Um, I guess early on in Abby and I's relationship, like I said to her one, one time, I said, I don't just love you, I like you. And she had a hard time understanding that for the longest, uh, she didn't understand what, what do you mean you love and like me? And, and one day she came to me and she said, I understand because you, you can love your mom, you can love your dad and you can love everybody, but you can also not like them. And, right. that, and, and that was, she, it took her some, some time to understand that. And, you know, I think that goes into, I've got people running all over the house now, so they, um, but uh, how do I say this? I'm just going to come out and say this. When we like each other, the sex is great, but when there's turmoil or something going on, you might, and you, I, I know she's just doing it just because, or I'm just doing it just because, it, you might as well not, not even do it. You might as, might as well just, we might as well just sit down and instead of meeting that need, the need is something different. It's really, we need to get the need fixed up here and, it, and, and here than the physical need. Uh -huh. And because it's, it's just like, right. It's just like, you're not, you're not even in it. You're not connected. You're, you're it's, it's just, you're just doing it just to do it, which is, and I've, I've learned that in those cases, I'd rather, I'd rather sit down and just work through things mm. and which is hard when you have kids and everything like that. And your life is so busy. You just, my biggest thing is, you know, I almost have like a checklist in my head of things I need to get done in the day. And I let that checklist get in front of, um, things that I need to do with Abby. And in some cases, she is one of those words of affirmation. I mean, even, even with me being here, she sent me a text. I got, I think I got it a little late, but she's like, I've been here. Um, I've been playing with my dad and your dad and everything this weekend. I haven't even, I've, I've initiated all the phone calls or texts. And um, I'm like, made me feel like really bad about it. But the other thing is it's, it's hard to get reception where I'm at, which is an excuse. And that's not, that's not, it should be. It's not good. Um, but, and then the other thing was, um, I'm trying to gather all my thoughts here, but the, uh, the other thing is this whole, these chapters and everything have taught me to be more understanding to, to Abby and, and try to understand what she's coming from and a different side. And she has different thoughts and, feelings and uh, emotions about certain subjects and um you know i'm real bad with tones she catches she picks up on tones and i am come from a um, a household where you know it's my father you know when he when he gets excited or he talks something his tone just continually goes like just rises he's not mad at you he might even be excited about something but he but he gets but his tone just continues to rise and I'm the same way. And I have to, and then understand that. And because when I do that with Abby and then she'll be like, stop yelling at me. We might even be just having simple discussion and then it escalates into something more than it really is. And I've noticed and she, that that's been kind of that, that escalates our discussions very quickly I've noticed whereas it's something that we just need we're just having a back and forth debate about something will turn into an argument and I'm like I just want to have a, a conversation um and work through something and you know I have to work on that that's that's a big thing for me 
And uh, the other thing was, is I hope we continue this because this is great. I think I feel like my relationship with Abby has is, is grown over these couple of weeks we've been doing this. I don't know what we but we get another book or whatever, but this is this has been awesome and it's worked out very well with with uh, our schedule and the way we do this. Okay, I think that's it. I'm so glad that makes me so happy. Oh, I'm glad this has been good for you guys. It's been such a blessing for us. Um, such a blessing. I just, I hope it's, it's blessed you guys as much as it has for us. I can't believe we only have two, two weeks, right? two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks left, but, but I can't believe it. And I'm, I'm glad we got to talk about this tonight. Cause this was something that, you know, can easily be slipped under the rug, but it's a very real, um, conversation that I feel like needs to be had sometimes you have to talk through things and just get some other people's opinion and um so that's great anything else anybody wants to say before we hop off any last words any closing remarks I agree Jeff this small group has been an eye-opener and such a great thing for Brandon and I's marriage yay I agree this has been a huge blessing yeah. good so maybe we'll do a round two of something else in a couple of weeks after we get, yeah, good. That'd be good. Good. We'll get a poll and see what you guys want to do next, but we'll, we'll take a, a couple of weeks or whatever. And then awesome. I'm so glad. Too. I'm so glad. Yeah, we're glad. You want to pray? Yeah. Well, y'all listen, man, I, I just want to just real quick, just say, uh, man, we love y'all. We think, we think about y'all. I wish we were, you know, posting a little more um, in the group. But I know that, dude, our schedule this week had been had been bananas. So I get everybody's schedule is kind of crazy. But mm -hmm. just know, man, we we think about y'all. We pray for y'all. And uh, and man, this has been this is hard for me. This not opening up, but the fact that I can't talk a lot because I'm not I'm not a facilitator. <laughs> okay, I am not a facilitator. I don't do well at facilitation. I am I am a preacher. I am a teacher I, and so I like to talk a lot this is why um, I get no words in at home yeah well he that's not always true no I'm just kidding so that's why our tone gets higher so that she can hear me <laughs> <laughs> no I'm actually just trying to say something and he's just gonna <gasps> talk over so, me <laughs> so anyway just just know that man this is I'm get we're, we're getting so much out of this and I love hearing what what y'all have to say and and it's been man iron sharpens iron and this is this has been this has been really cool so Okay, let's Hopefully pray. Hopefully Satan has not attacked you guys' marriage um, as much in the first three of us doing this. Oh, my gosh. It was like, like there were two weeks where, let's just be honest, there were two weeks where we sat, we were so mad at each other that we did this class, and, like, we literally, as soon as it was over, he went this way, I went that way, and it was like, we didn't talk. That's true. I'm not kidding. That's true. Because, like... Well can, yeah. can I just can I just say one thing very quickly? Um, we you know we we've kind of experienced some some similar attacks too, um, but th the thing that I've been seeing is as as I get um, you know as I look deeper into what's happening with me as I'm reading the book and then our marriage, I'm also very much aware that I'm getting friends and different people coming to me whose marriages are literally crumbling. Right. Um, more and more people just around me and and it's kind of scary because I feel like they you know I need to invite them into the group but I know that they're not at a place where they would even receive that so um, I'm not sure you know how to even deal with that but it just it just seems like that's that's kind of where where things are um, right now with with hope and I yeah it's just part of it. We knew it was going to happen, but we even both said, we were like, this is the most we have fought in a really long time. Yeah. And so, and, but I mean, when you tread like this and you're working on your marriage, it's like Satan's just going to use everything he can to, to uh, make you guys really put into practice what we're reading. So anyway, go ahead. <clears throat> All right, well, let's pray. Daddy, we love you. God, I just thank you so much for these for these families, these <laughs> these friends, uh, God, that we've been able to go through uh, these things together that we could just talk and just be real and be honest and be open. Uh, God, we don't have it all figured out, but God, you said where where we lack wisdom, God, you give it to those liberally 
for those who ask it. For any man who likes wisdom, let him come to you, for you give it to him liberally. You want to give them the tools necessary. God, you said you have given us everything that we need for godly living. And so, Father God, we just want to continue to apply those things. There's a difference between knowing and applying. You know, knowing doesn't do much if you don't use it. Uh, so, I mean, you, your, your word even tells us, do not be hearers only, but doers of the word. Uh, so, Father God, help us to continuously be doers of what you've called us to. God, I pray for protection and guidance and blessings over these families and ours. God, we love you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll see you guys next week. Boom. Have an awesome week. Have a good week. one. See y'all.